Hello, welcome. My name is San. This is a reading today for Gemini. There are no dates on my readings. I trust that when they find you, if they resonate, then they're yours at that time. Gemini, I'm doing your reading today with the Light Sears Tarot blended with the Muse in one stack. So you will see a mix of both in your spread today. So we've got the Ten of Cups and it's upside down because I placed my deck upside down on the table. So that's interesting. The Ten of Cups and then the devil, the, the devil at the bottom of the deck, both of them upside down. It's kind of throwing me for a loop, actually. It was so unexpected that I like, okay, so it could be something like, it could be something like this unexpected um, occurrence or uh, an event or a happening that is somehow pairing a really potentially unpleasant energy with a with a very pleasant energy so there's some kind of an association happening that is um maybe not making sense completely like why why would those two energies go together there's something there though it's like but it's upside down the whole thing is upside down that's the, that's the point it's like that's it is true there it's like they're not really meant to go together it's something like that the fact that they're reversed is pointing out the fact that they're because they're coming up together but they're not supposed to be and so that's a true that's a truth there that impulse that it's not making sense or something like that okay so <laughs> Let's pull an overall energy from the Creativity Oracle. I'm in a really strange space right now, mentally, I guess, or energetically. I'm kind of chuckling at myself because it's such a, a, an, unfamiliar, an unfamiliar energy that I'm in right now. Okay, so let's pull an overall energy from the Creativity Oracle. I was just questioning, is it, is it anything to do with you? Am I picking up your energy at all? I mean, it is when I just came into this room I kind of got into this strange space. So it could just be the energy of the reading overall. So a card just fell on the floor. Oh, pitch. Okay, pitch. This card, this card um, with the pitch, it came up in a reading like maybe a month ago or something, but it talks to me about the pitch coming in. The pitch is actually coming in now. In your reading, it's almost like it's almost kind of this uh, boomerang. Is it a boomerang? Is that the right word? A, where you throw it out and then it comes right back to you. That's incredible because that's exactly what is going on in your reading today. So the pitch is coming back to you. And it's making me uh, think of the day that I was at a T Detroit Tigers baseball game and the pitch came directly at me and, and I avoided it and it hit the seat. And it was this startling moment. And then I got all of this criticism about why didn't I just catch the ball, right? So it was this very kind of confounding moment where it was like a peak experience in a sentence, a, a sense, a heightened uh, moment that brings you into the present and this kind of instinct to, to a, uh, a fight or flight response that, you know, kicks you into survival mode in a sense, safety, move out of the way because of safety, but then dealing with this kind of backlash about, um, did you, did you handle that appropriately? So all sorts of complexity in, in all of that. Right. And then especially with starting your reading with those, these upside down cards, and then what's already here on the table, things are getting very intense in the readings recently it's kind of it's almost like every reading ever since the Aries it's like we're going one step farther into this energy um and I feel like it's kind of this it's kind of this energy of aversion it's like this knee-jerk reaction just like me moving out of the way of the baseball is probably the right thing to do I would have got hit with it it would have caused injury to me but this kind of instinctual aversion or the fight and fight or flight trigger so this idea of aversion avoiding something and so every reading now is kind of stepping farther into that energy and i'm actually getting a little bit resistant to it kind of on a very superficial level because i feel like nobody's going to want to watch a reading about things that make you uncomfortable um anyway 
So here we are. So we're beginning this reading with the Page of Wands. And it's, well, the Page of Wands paired with the nine of wands, right? So you can see this boomerang effect, what I'm talking about here. It's like throwing something away or letting something go, releasing something that actually feels really good and appropriate and beneficial in the moment. But then there's this guide that pops up, like immediately kind of um, returning this to, it's like bringing it back to you or at least bringing the topic, holding the topic in your awareness or in your consciousness or in your reality it's like it's like you may kind of feel like you're casting it away from you but it's still present in the environment and trying to make itself known to you through um, guides or individuals that maybe are kind of pointing to it in a in a direct or not so direct way okay and this is okay what i mean by that is for example you may have suddenly kind of a flurry of people saying to you that what they're saying to you is beneficial to you even if you don't want to hear it your instinct to not want to hear it is your indication that you should probably hear it you listen even more closely okay but this this is complicated it's not necessarily what that individual, it's almost like your neighbor pops up and says something to you that you don't want to hear. And then if you attempt to walk away from it, they challenge you on it saying, the only reason why you're walking away is because you don't want to deal with this uncomfortable truth. And it's not, what I'm trying to say is it's not necessarily that particular conversation or the content of that particular conversation that is the thing that is trying to be brought to you. The message that's trying to be brought to you is that there's something specific that you are um, kind of holding at a distance or casting away from you that may really have something incredibly beneficial in it for you. And it's not necessarily this conversation with this neighbor, for example, or somebody who emails you out of the blue with their version of things, whatever it is and you immediately say no to that thing and they come back at you like criticizing you and you're in that uncomfortable energy of like, why aren't you listening to me? You, there's, there's goodness in this for you even though your, your body tells you that that's not true. So what I'm trying to say is that if that occurrence is coming up in through, through a variety of individuals or circumstances, it's not that each of those circumstances are holding something valuable to you. It's the message of there is something, there's something somewhere in your life. And I want to say it's something much more close and personal, maybe even like a very private matter that any of these individuals in your exterior realm wouldn't even know is going on with you, but they're bringing you the message of you're overlooking something. There's something beneficial here for you. Do you see what I'm saying? So because this, um, the nine of wands and the Ace of Wands coming next, it's a little bit like what was going on in the Taurus reading yesterday where there was this card that had this one element in it. It was the history, the the aversion to history, but the, there was a UFO up in the sky. It's the same idea. It's like this, this is a, a, a kind of an uncomfortable conversation or an unwelcome messenger or message, but there's a piece in it, just like I was describing, it's not necessarily the whole message. It's not necessarily that the criticism of your neighbor is appropriate. It's the idea of looking more closely at aversion in general. And I want to, maybe in general, but I want to say actually more specifically, it's like honing in on something really specific. Because like I said, it feels like it's something like really up close and personal. Maybe even has to do like with your own body, right? Because this nine of pentacles coming up next. Um, this is the independence and sovereignty card, right? The kind of um, being really self-sufficient. But because it has all of this kind of like herbal, you know, she's cooking. It's kind of all of this. Um, what am I trying to say? It's like your relationship to the natural world, your relationship, like how your body um, feels to you and how you're treating your body. Maybe it could be something like that, right? So I want to say it's something up close and personal to you, but it's being kind of reflected to, to you potentially through individuals in your life. 
But again, it's not those individuals or their messages. It's just kind of trying to throw it back on you that there's something going on with you that it really feels like a relief, maybe to kind of avoid it. Maybe it's like just kind of putting it aside because there's an uncomfortableness in there for you that you're just casting it aside because it feels better, right? It feels like a relief to kind of just put that off to the side or not deal with it. There has been a kind of a procrastination energy coming up recently. But again, there's this... Somebody in the comments said something about procrastination, which I really love, and it's kind of coming up more. It's something about, it's about timing, right? Procrastination is kind of, in my mind, this intuitive knowing that it's not quite the right time to do that thing, generally. I mean, maybe not in all circumstances, there may be like really active avoidance and denial, but just kind of like when something comes up and you just like, no, I don't, I don't want to deal with that right now. And it just kind of keeps getting put aside. But then there comes a time when it is appropriate and right timing, right? And then suddenly you're eager to do that thing. So procrastination is not necessarily something to resist or, or something to resist or criticize yourself or be harsh on yourself about. It could actually just be your own internal guidance kind of saying, not today it's not meant for today but it's kind of like lingering in the vicinity because it's it's getting prepared for you to deal with that you're getting prepared to deal with it but it's like you'll know when that alignment is there and when it's time to go on that issue and it'll just happen effortlessly okay so nine of pentacles followed by the two voices and the knight of voices right so this was looking to me like, especially because it's paired with this and now with the pitch card that came up on the overall energy about this kind of, this this has always looked to me like something being brought in, right? It's like this bird messenger here, something being brought in. But today, just because of the way everything is playing out, it's actually something that's being, it's almost like uh, asking spirit to take this for you, right? It's like handing it over to source or the universe or God, right? That's what that bird messenger is looking like. I mean, it's like the, the moment you do that, like I said, it feels really good and like a relief to you. Like, okay, the universe is gonna take care of that. Yes, that might be, absolutely part of the process, just like I was talking about with procrastination being appropriate too, right? But there's something here about the moment that you let that go, even though it feels like relief to you in the moment, there's a splitting of energy that happens on some level that you may not be tuned into or it's not appropriate timing necessarily if you really examine it you may feel it kind of really far in the back of your mind somewhere that it's like i have a feeling this is this isn't resolved yet it's going to come back and then here it is it's coming back right so it's like this casting out and then it just comes right back to you because it being out away from you is actually kind of a splitting of the energy because something about this thing belongs to you right that's why it's coming back because it's for you and it belongs to you. You see what I'm saying? It's almost like casting an aspect of yourself away. And it's just, it's like, no matter what you do, it's going to come back to you. It's designed to come back to you, right? That's what it's looking like. Okay. So seven of cups, four of swords. Okay. So the seven of cups and the four of swords is talking to me about kind of re-examining your choices. The Seven of Cups to me always talks about kind of surveying the options on the table when needing to make a decision, right? So it's almost like resting in or meditating in the process of how it is that you are making choices. It's not necessarily at this point saying to make a different choice. It's kind of bringing into view the process of choosing and just resting with or resting in or meditating in the it's kind of like this it's like looking at all of the options the ones that you're inclined towards and the ones that you're not inclined towards and and like meditating on that energy itself and it's almost like ex meditating on or examining the fight or flight instinct, the fight or flight energy. It's something like that. You see what I mean? It's not necessarily talking about the specific choice itself. It's almost wanting to bring into view the mechanism of like that knee jerk reaction or that fight or flight mechanism wants to be examined. It's something like that. And it could be 
it could be applied to a specific situation, especially if there's something that that is like that you can't quite resolve or, or release from you. And what I actually forgot to say here is that there's something in these cards that are feeling kind of like a younger version of you. So it's almost like this is something that you may have been working with or trying to work through for years even, like going back to your adolescence. And so, you know, it, it's almost like it's become this habit or routine or just like this, um, it's like you know how to get relief from this situation because you've been doing it for so long. It's like it doesn't resolve it. It doesn't go, like go away permanently, but at least you get temporary relief, something like that. Because here it is, like here you are in your kind of uh, adult, sovereign, independent life and still kind of doing that mechanism, right? Okay, so... The Eight of Cups is coming after the Four of Swords. And so it was looking to me like, well, it's just bringing in this conversation or this examination of the how it is that you make your choices and resting in that rather than just, um, it's kind of like, uh, this is the interesting thing, taking the easy way out or the path of least resistance. It's like there's all of this kind of notion or idea about kind of going with the flow or the path of least resistance is the way to go. If there's, if you go where, if you go with the flow, that is the appropriate thing. It's like if there's resistance in it, am I, am I articulating this the right way? It feels like it's off somehow. There's, it's something like examining the reason why you walk away from things, right? So the Eight of Cups coming up is talking about, take a closer look at the thing, especially things that you've walked away from repeatedly over and over and over again. It wants to look at that mechanism because there's something really interesting in that that's starting to surface here a little bit. Coming up with this Queen of Pentacles here, this Queen of Pentacles, she started talking to me actually during the kind of like the pre-shuffle before she ever appeared in the reading. She kind of flashed up early on in my process this morning and she shifted to from the queen of materials and maybe it's the same thing from the queen of materials to the queen of the matrix. For some reason, it's just like the word materials just suddenly shifted to the word matrix. And I was like, whoa, queen of the matrix, queen of matrix energy. And there's, there's, there's something there about that, about there's, there's something about the knee jerk reaction, or maybe even the fight or flight response, which I'm not completely understanding. It's like, there's, there's a lot to work out there because I want to say fight or flight. It's instinctual. It's beneficial. It's like a primal kind of intuitive knowing that, that has no overthinking involved, right? It's like your first instinct. So that must be a beneficial response, right? But it's almost like, but is it? But is it? At least in, in a particular situation that is wanting to show something to you. It's like there's, there's some, this is the thing. It's like there's some small little piece. Like I said, it's not the whole picture. It's not the whole conversation with your neighbor or their message. It's just the, the little tidbit about examine what it is that you keep casting aside, right? Because there's, there's something in that for you. And although, although it's a small piece, maybe it's a small piece of how it's coming to you. Like it may not be anything to do with the messenger itself, but it's like one specific thing that they're saying to you. And if you focus in on that one specific thing, it seems like a small detail, but I want to say it's just because it's just the gateway, right? It's just the door opening in that direction because it's actually quite enormous. It's almost like it's huge, right? This comes through sometimes as like the mind of God or it could be just talking about like the universe itself. It's like, it seems tiny, but when, if you move into that energy, it's like, it's, it's actually incredibly enormous, right? So there's something here about the knee jerk reaction, at least when it comes to this specific topic, whatever it is, it could be, like I was saying in the Taurus reading yesterday about how 
If you notice, sometimes like topics will keep coming up in front of you that you feel an aversion to. Could be something like some radical kind of conspiracy theory, some strange kind of rabbit hole, some kind of medical advice, something that keeps kind of coming up in conversation around you and your impulse, your knee jerk reaction is like, no way, that's not for me and you cast it aside, right? But just like I was talking about with procrastination, then sometimes it comes up in just the right timing where something opens and you actually lean into it and it opens this kind of whole new world of potential for you to discover, right? This like whole area of reality that hadn't been explored by you yet. And it's like, because there's something interesting here about this queen of matrix and the impulse to walk away from something. It's almost like there's some sort of a mechanism designed into the matrix that we are existing within that it's like that that is it's so you know especially with this too this like being upside down that this there's there's a real benefit even if it's just for a mental exercise in taking anything that you may kind of consider just true like my saying that the fight or flight mechanism must be beneficial because it's instinctual it happens almost without us thinking about it right but does that necessarily make it beneficial is that true or should we just tip it on its head for a moment and just question whether is that possible or is it some sort of a thing that was embedded in this matrix that may actually be designed from keeping us from discovering incredibly powerful kind of universes of knowledge or wisdom or resources. Do you see what I'm saying? It's kind of like this gatekeeper energy. So <clears throat> nine of swords popping up next, queen of emotions, queen of cups. This came up in the Taurus yesterday. It was talking about kind of being on the surface, being on the surface and this incredible incredible potential that is yet to be tapped into because the experience of the what's exposing itself to you on the surface is kind of coming through as this uncomfortable energy right it's like for example some radical conspiracy theory that has popped up on your radar it it, it automatically triggers this aversion right like this is insane it can't be true it quite possibly isn't true but there's benefit in exploring it do you see what i'm saying but it's being completely just overlooked because if you like dive into a crazy conspiracy theory rabbit hole even though there's an incredible amount of discernment it's kind of like pulling up this whole mess of stuff even if you end up casting most of it aside, it's like that it's actually, that's what that's been talking about. I was looking at this and saying, what is this talking about? It's like, even if you cast most of that um, realm aside, it's like there is something kind of like in the depths of it that is almost like, it's almost like this kind of like um, two steps removed. It's kind of like this too. It starts out with an uncomfortable conversation with your neighbor, but if you just look at that little gem and go into that, it's like, it just keeps opening. It's almost this kind of fractaling energy, right? <clears throat> so it's like it, you have this initial aversion to it, but if you kind of pull it up by the roots and look at it and all its kind of strangeness and, and discomfort, there is, it's like there's a portal in there somewhere that is leading you somewhere incredibly beneficial because we're ending here with the lover's card, right? And this is coming up just like the Taurus reading. It's not necessarily coming up as like a relationship, although this could be experienced as kind of, um, uh, pulling somebody into your reality that is kind of containing this whole universe or wealth of knowledge, right? That, so maybe it is an individual, but I want to say it's not necessarily like any kind of romantic relationship. It's, it's like by pulling on this thread, by being willing to get, because the aversion aspect, I want to say is just on the surface. It's not the whole 
package, right? So if you can just sidestep your aversion for a moment and kind of pull this thing up, it's like maybe there is a specific individual there, but what it's coming through as more is that whatever it is, it's like even if it takes some time to kind of work through all of the details and kind of get to the real depth down there at the bottom, it's gonna open up this energy that you are absolutely going to kind of like fall in love with. It's like this whole realm of stuff that is so beneficial to you. It's coming through as like incredibly supportive. It's like life sustaining. It's almost like it's life is like um, source energy type of, of energy for you, pure direct source energy access but it's like you have to go through this kind of like maze to get there and it's like almost like this maze of aversion because because the because the matrix itself is hiding it under layers of aversion it's almost like it's programmed you into being into being uncomfortable when you're getting close it's just like the upside down thing just like everything being upside down you know that game of um in, what's it called like hot or colder where you, where when you play with a kid and you you're like you hidden something in the room and you tell them hotter 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 colder 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 it's almost like the matrix itself is designed to have that embedded in it the idea of you're getting closer you're getting closer you're getting closer to it but it's like it's all because it's the matrix and not the organic true higher reality it's flipped on its head and so it's like as you get closer to things that are really beneficial for you like really deeply like at the core beneficial for you in like a really breakthrough level kind of way it's like it it it's saying colder 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 you want to go the other way see what i'm saying okay so i hope that makes sense i'm gonna leave it there i'm gonna to continue to pull i mean did I finish this thought? It's like, so So the whole thing is if you're getting an aversion to something that keeps coming up over and over and over again, consider whether it's the matrix kind of playing a trick on you and wanting, giving you this signal of this is the wrong direction, don't go this way, because it's actually trying to kind of mask the truer reality that is there for you, okay? So I'm gonna pull cards, create an extended. If you're interested in that, link is in the description. If not, I will see you next time. Thanks, bye.